two analysis there on the spot. But the grades that would be awarded is D and E only. So this is something which we uh, wanted to clarify. Okay. Now, following this, what we also did is that we did different documents so that you understand why we do capstone projects. So uh, here is a case of a, a coffee shop, which is called as Vijayaram's Coffee. It is a small business, uh, which is managed by a family, a father and a son. So uh, these guys um, started their business in a place called T Nagar in Chennai. So if you guys come to Paradox, uh, you should definitely visit this place called T Nagar because this is one of the most happening places of Chennai. Now, T Nagar. Uh, so these guys have two outlets where basically they just sell coffee and uh, tea and so on and so forth. And uh, why I chose this particular thing is that uh, during the pandemic time when we had to move out of our hostels, I was staying in Trinagar for around three, four months. And that is when, you know, I got to meet this Senthil. So um, Senthil's dad is pretty old, around 80 years old and kind of had to um, sit, uh, you know, he would come and sit for one, two hours. But then it is Senthil who kind of came and uh, popularized, like, popularized this particular outlet. And uh, while there were 15 shops around the vicinity of this particular place, still the crowd kept on coming to him. So that is why naturally I was interested as to why, you know, uh, people patronize this place. And this is a link to his Instagram page, a very small business, but who did exceptionally well. Now, the, the theory or whatever we learn in marketing kind of tells us that when the customers are satisfied, they tend to be loyal. And when they are loyal, they have intentions. Intentions could translate into actual buying behavior. But if there are intentions, naturally, it gets translated into buying. Happy customers. The other advantage is they become the unpaid uh, sales force and uh, for the business. And um, they not only do that, but they get in new people too, just like the way I'm doing, right? You know. I was one of his customers. I really liked the way he marketed, really liked the way he established a connect with the crowd. And for that reason, we did all. He, um, he was good at it. So this place was patronized by everyone for different reasons. One was that he did not sell any products related to tobacco. Whereas in a typical shop, uh, which you see, uh, you know, a typical uh, tea or coffee shop, you see that people sell tobacco products. And that is why you see a certain section of the crowd does not go there. He introduced something called as a wafer biscuit coffee, which became a super hit. Now he just made something made, made out of wafer biscuit and he started giving coffee in that. You can see it's in his Instagram page. And he only started with those things wherein he anticipated that, okay, this would get him business. And the moment that, you know, he sensed that, okay, things were not going out, he slowly phased it out without actually others getting to know it. There's something called as just noticeable difference. Maybe in some sessions I would be explaining as to what it means. Introduced something called as coffee shops, coffee shots, when he kind of sensed that the customers were slowly switching. He brought something called as instant coffee shots for 10 rupees, which kind of became super hit. And in this way, um, he kind of managed retention and acquisitions perfectly. Okay. And if you look at the shop, it is pretty small. You can say that it is um, around a 250 square feet, but the kind of business that he does is in lakhs. And it is, you know, it is a nice case study for you to go and understand how, you know, being good to the customers actually kind of helps in the long run. Okay, so this is something that uh, you have to go and read. And then finally, we have made something called as FAQs, which are the frequently asked questions. So you might be having questions on how should the submissions be made? Uh, when should I be making the submissions? What are the reasons report gets rejected? Or what is how is that you can get good grades in the projects? All these things, what we have done is we have explained it in the FAQs. And typically, we see that following there are many more reasons but these were the primary reasons for rejections where you know the students don't attend any classes they just want a degree which is a fact right some of them just want a degree and do substandard work you know they don't have an understanding of concepts of bdm theory so many things so on and so forth happens okay so this happens and then what uh, you know the insights are not from your data but it's more based on your intuition so on and so forth so these are some of the reasons for rejection so this is something which you should not do and then finally, we have one more document, which is which briefly explains what a capstone project is. So kind of, um, again, a three to four page document explaining what it is. We have written shorter documents only for the fact that you should understand what the project is. Because if you have longer documents, maybe that your attention span is less, so you might not get into it. So what we have done is that we have, we have crafted it in such a way that you can, each of these reads will not take you more than 20 minutes. Okay. And then finally, uh, what I also said was that you know, the business that you kind of collect data from, they could be in uh, different domains, right? They could be in B2B or they could be in B2C um, or they could be in both domains. So it is very important to understand the underlying or underpinning characteristics between these two businesses. Okay. So this is extremely important. And this is something which we 
capture here and what i would like to emphasize here is that this particular uh, project is not just about data collection you might see in discourse some of your friends writing that it's a data collection process the answer is no in short to summarize this you reach out to a business it could be any business a structured or an unstructured i typically su suggest unstructured because structured businesses have things in place whereas unstructured they actually do not have anything and if you look at the best capstone projects they have done you know some of the insights that we have got has been really exciting really good ones i'll narrate a couple of examples in 5 10 minutes and then what happens is that you speak to them try to understand the problems that they face okay what is unstructured business now unstructured business is something like a kirana store vegetable shop street shops which do not document or maintain things what they do is that they typically remember things they don't know what is what what is coming in what is sold what are the profits they have a classic example was we had a uh, a uh, 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 okay won't be able to give us the granularity of data i will give you an example so we had one student um so who did this project on an unstructured business so there is a place called west mambalam in uh, uh, chennai so i'll just stop the comments from now because it's completely popping but i request you to post it later so what happened is that uh, this particular student worked did her project on a vegetable business which was in a place called west mambalam now the problem they had was they had a main market from where the vegetables used to come and uh, by speaking to the owner she understood that the businesses that they made, the the profits that they made was barely like 2000 3000 a month and they were like you know in very bad state and then when we kind of try to understand why is this happening so we uh, asked them okay what is that have you kind of documented this so on and so forth so uh, they had no absolutely no documentation so what the student did was that uh, you know made her, made a sheet of paper kind of wrote details and asked them to kind of you know whenever you when something comes when something goes make sure that you make a note of it and what she did was she every 3 or 4 days she would go and collect it and come back so this is what something they did later on they found out that you know the when the first set of vegetables comes from the main market to them you know 30% was spoiled which means that the vendor who actually supplied things to them you know these were guys who did not have much of an education and you know it was spoiled so these guys did not know what to do second thing is that they ordered things which they thought would sell but would never sell on certain days of the week people would not buy certain stuff for example uh, some of their highest selling things was tomatoes and potatoes but you know the profit margin was very very less the margins were pretty less and then we had to rework and kind of tell them that what is that they have to order in what quantities they have to order so on and so forth this happened as a field experiment which was done for a period of 4 months and then later at the end of 4 months she uh, you know this particular owner started getting a profit of around started seeing somewhere between 15 to 18000 uh, you know increase from what he was earning earlier so you know when you're doing when you're doing such service to you know such businesses it is actually of more help than doing with a structured business so that is why i said that unstructured they don't have know how whereas structured will have everything in place uh, they have data in place there are people who are analysts but still what they have something is called as a blind spot so every business does have a blind spot so that is always there but uh this is why we suggest that go with unstructured one and never go and ask for data directly so this is what we cover in seven steps of selling i don't want to do it now because it would be too much of uh, you know uh, lectures today so what we wanted to brief you today was only about the projects your two pathways uh, we we kind of um, you know uh, we kind of want to tell you that go with the conventional one which is analysis with primary data because the insights that you get is large not only that it also gives you an opportunity to understand and learn completely about a business but then if you are not in a position to devote time then you have the second pathway but then the grades that you get is only d and d so this is what i wanted to cover for now and we will now take your uh, q and a's and uh, any doubts that you have so if aditya is there we'll go in order another one to our city yeah 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 and we are sorry for the glitch we don't yeah. know for what reason it happened so uh, extremely sorry but if there are any questions we would be happy to answer so basically uh, as the doctor ashwin told you he covered a lot of things uh, which needs to be focused in the project so any what 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 will be happening like uh, i can give you an example of a girl like uh, she has taken a three terms uh, for completing the project uh, basically initially she is hesitating to uh, communicate with the owners and uh, she is not getting any data so the pitching is very important how you are going to pitch it if you ask if you come to me uh, even though i know you or uh, uh, maybe ashwin come to me and he'll directly ask me uh, aditya can you give me the data of your accounts like even though we are good friends 
but there is a uh, there is one thing thing is like why he is asking me every account details right so similar thing you are going to ask for the owner with the owner right you are taking a, uh, you are going to take the confidentiality uh, of his own shop or of his own business which initially if you will ask him he will tell okay why he want my data right even though if you explain so this is the main topic name main point uh, you don't have to pitch directly for the data you just try to communicate with them slowly just be familiar with them and explain them what exactly you are going to do it i have like uh, i and ashwin make made one uh, uh, picture i'll show it with you you always take that picture with you so it will be better because when you are going to explain uh, just try to show them like this is what exactly the project we are going to do and from there you can explain them okay what exactly uh, the bdm project how you are going to do it and so this is what the pictures we have made my screen is visible yes sir yeah. yes sir so this yes, is sir. the picture we have made uh, uh, for all of you So I hope it is visible now. No, it is not visible. Not now it's visible. Yeah, yeah. It is visible now. Yeah. Zoom it so a bit. This is the you useful. Stretch it. Stretch it a bit this... so that. Yeah. Zoom it a bit. Yeah. You can go one by one. Yes. Yeah. So this is basically a document which uh, we both has already made for you. So it's a handy document you can put in your mobile. You can explain what exactly you are doing in the project. So it's a brief or you can say it's explanation of your uh, project in one image. So initially what you have to do, you have to initiate, you have to find the business. You have to think whether you have to go for B2B and B2C, but how you will think about it, right? So basically it will depend upon the context. Like if you have a contact with a bigger company, you can just try to short it out. Okay, these are the companies or these are my friends who are working on this, this company. So you can check the possibilities. Okay, B2B, you have any connections or not? Or B2C, you have any connections or not? So this is the initial stage where you have to think, okay, what exactly the business you want to take for the BDM project? Once it is done, then you can just uh, check, okay, what are the possibilities next? So you can just take a... Uh, 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 selected business, uh, their prospectives. You can do a study when you are approaching the business. You can do a, a pre a pre analysis. Okay, if you are selecting a domain of grocery store, if you are selecting a, a domain of pharmacy, right? Then you can just try to find it out. Okay, what are the problems which pharmacy business related to pharmacy or business related to web uh, development? These different businesses are doing right what are the businesses they are having a problem right so previously when you are approaching to them you find out the problems okay so this is the main point because if you are going with a blank mind then nothing is uh, happening they will not have uh, they, they'll not uh, it will not create interest amongst the business uh, to give your data so so it is similar like uh, i can say you the example when you are sitting when you are going in a train a basic example when you are going in a train there are a lot of people they are discussing a lot of things right some are giving a random example if you, they are uh, discussing about the politics they are discussing about the geography some are giving a different examples which are not related even but there there is some persons like uh, if you are able to find out some person who is giving evidence right who is giving some example based on the data right so based on the data, like in, in 2023 election, what will happen? And based on uh, like uh, what exactly the media stats they, it will bring. So it will create an interest amongst you, right? So you are uh, having some interest. And after completing a meeting or after completing your journey, you'll come uh, to your house and at least you can search it. Okay, this is what he was telling, whether it is correct or not, right? So a curiosity in the mind is created at the time, right? So that is what you have to create a curiosity in the mind of the business or, or business owner or whatever the business you are selecting, right? So this is the important thing which you have to create when you are going to the business. So if you don't know anything, there should be no curiosity. You are going to ask with him only, okay, what exactly the problems you are having? If he knows the problem, then he will just, uh, what he will do? He'll just try to rectify the problem itself, right? The problem is that sometimes the problems are there in the business, but the owner are not aware of, right? So these are, this is the important thing when you are going to pitch it down. You don't have to ask directly for the data. 
right you have to just be familiar just try to tell okay you are dealing with the pharmacy business what exactly the pharmacy business uh, are lagging on what are the problems they are facing on so these things you have to slowly you have to explain it right after then once your initiation is finished then you have to go for the second uh, phase that is the planning that how you are going to uh, create a planning how you are you have to plan your project right so what exactly the business effective business problems are if you see uh, some of the detective movies or some of uh, the uh, movies where uh, cops are there right if murder is happening what they are doing they are making a map right they are making a map in the wall and they are putting a key points uh, they are in their itself and they're creating a link amongst them okay what are the possibilities they are checking the most of the possibilities which they can uh take it from they are just uh, just getting the clues right so based on that map they are getting the clues okay uh, they are uh, getting clues and they are linking with each other so the similar way you have to do right whenever you are going uh, to have a meeting with the uh, with the business owner you have to make a points you have to make a map okay these are the potential problems which the business can face based on the data then you have to relate uh, these thing and you have to plan it accordingly right what exactly the map how you have to follow uh, the feasibility check of the business because uh, i've seen some of the project they previously what they are doing it's they are sending they are giving the proposal right they are giving a, a proposal they are uh, putting something else but in the mid term they are putting something else which is not a business problem that is the r d project so i uh, i'll explain you briefly about two things the r d project and the business problem basically uh if you see amazon right so amazon or apple or anything any other product or services you can see so in the app what they are doing they are doing they are upgrading the app right but upgrading the app will not able to lose the customer right if they are having the existing app then it is fine customers are already there if they will not improve it if they will not upgrade it it doesn't mean that they are losing the customer right so basically if uh, you i'll give you one more example of car right so if we uh, like different versions of cars are coming for maruti right so basically if they will not upgrade to new version it doesn't matter like the customer will not come and buy the car so basically it's r d project they are doing and it is pretty different from the business problem right so this is a business problem but effectively it will be happen after two to three years right the, the outcome will become after two to three years whether it is feasible or not right so these are the problems you have to uh, keep in mind you have to plan it accordingly so that once you are submitting the proposal then at uh certain phases it uh then after some time uh, it will not be rejected, right? After so, just this this is the important point where uh, students are lagging on, right? They are not thinking uh, initially, and they are just putting uh, some random business problem, and they are submitting the project. So, what is happening after a certain time? Their reports are getting rejected. So, avoid this. There should be a proper planning. Uh, you have to put a Gantt chart, right? From the Gantt chart, you can just. Uh, tell what exactly your plan is all about just don't uh, we have seen again chat today where a student is sending day by day planning right day by day planning you can't do it right because uh, it's not necessarily that, uh, like your planning will go per day and it is not necessary when you are submitting a proposal it is accepted so it is failed just plan accordingly and after the planning the third step is the execution right how you have to execute the thing how you have to collect the data what exactly are your objectives so when you are collecting the data there there is the data is what data is something a pattern plus noise some information plus noise so then you have to do a metadata then you have to do a data cleaning processes so these data cleaning process will remove the noise from your data so if the noise will be removed then you are getting a pattern right so this is how you have to make you have to make your project you have to go with the uh, project journey but try to make it as uh, useful try to Im implement as many as the skills you are having because uh, this project is how uh, is pretty useful for you because whatever you are learning you are going to implement it and after implementation whether it is correct or not you are getting a reviews right because when you are going to the company you are not getting a reviews uh, something if you, if you are working on a new project uh, so if it is not feasible they will tell okay no it is not feasible you can work it out okay but here what is what you are getting when you are uh, submitting the project if it is not feasible then only uh, then also you are getting a feedback okay this is not feasible why it is not feasible and what are the possible options you are having like if you are putting uh, you are taking two months data right and two months data you are forecasting for next one year 
so it is not possible so these type of reviews you are getting uh, after uh, submission and after we are getting uh, we are reviewing your reports we are giving you the feedbacks so from that feedbacks you are going to learn okay if i am implementing pie chart on this particular data it is feasible if it is not feasible you will get a comment okay this is not feasible you can try some other plots so it's not something a data uh, data collection activity but the implementation of your skills on the real data right so this is what uh, we have shared a lot of documents with you and just try to refer the document and in case if you people are having uh, 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 any issues any problems then first first uh, step your first step should be just refer the document if you are not finding anything in the document or in the videos right then you can just drop us a mail we every sunday i am taking a session we are having a multiple session uh, we can have a pitching session as well like where we will explain you how to pitch you the business and from there you you will get idea okay this is how you need to pitch for the business we can have some activities as well some breakout sessions right so where uh, you have to uh, pitch in front of others so you will get an understanding okay this is what this is how you have to pitch this is what you have to pitch what exactly uh, you have to do uh, when you are getting a data so these all things you just go with this journey just don't uh, 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 like uh, uh, make it too hard right because it's too simple if you are executing in a uh, uh, like a, in a systematic manner but if you are uh, creating a lot of uh, issues and you are getting panicked then it will be a, a difficult activity right so the data activity you have to do you have to plan execute everything you have to put in a systematic way that's why we are in the proposal phase itself we are asking you for a timeline right so that if timeline is there then you can execute it execute it properly so i remember my old days uh, right when we are making a timetable for a study right so sometime we are executing sometime we are not executing it it is a different matter but uh, i have seen my friends they are making a timetables and they uh, noted their activities like when to wake up when to go for a uh, uh, sports when to go for a homework what to study what subject to study so this is what if you have a proper planning then you can execute it well okay yeah i think aditya you have to open the chat box and then uh, maybe we will take your questions yeah, one yeah. by one so uh, please uh, i'll open the queue and uh, i'll call out your names so vedansh then devesh shreya narayanan so we'll go in order Ved and once you have come asked your question please uh, put your hand down okay yeah uh, vedansh yeah hi hi dr ashwin hi dr aditya uh, thank you for providing detail and uh, having a such informative session it is really helpful uh my question is that you specifically mentioned you know while doing this project if we go by the primary data collection uh you specific you specifically mentioned that we should have a video interaction with owner yes. uh so in case like we are unable to find a business you know where we uh, directly get in touch with owner and if we go with you know a bigger organization for example flipkart you know where we have someone you know where who is a manager of particular yeah, area yeah that, that is fine i mean we just said if it is see if it is a startup then you speak to the owner otherwise you speak to the managers and have that but yes we should be in a position where we can verify whatever you are giving it should match that's it we don't have a problem if it is a manager or some supervisor or somebody who heads that particular unit that is perfectly fine okay thank so you basically and basically we are uh, uh, preferring that uh, like the next person from where you are taking a data like if it is a bin company we are not ex expecting you are taking a data from ceo and you can have a discussion the next executive person from where you are getting a data what who will be the source of a data right and he will give you the authenticity right if he is mm -hmm. a part of organization we are not expecting anything else right Mm -hmm. okay got it thank you so much one uh, more question so in case we get the data where the data is sensitive for example from a pharmaceutical company you know where they have hospitals you know cannot directly share the names is uh, no, the mask is, data works yeah. like mask data is see as i said uh, what we do is that the data that you share with us remains only with us and we also are bound by the non disclosure agreements uh, what happens is that we purge it after we kind of have a look at it okay so we don't mm -hmm. keep it so whatever 8000 or 9000 projects that have been evaluated once it comes we just check okay if this data is genuine uh, you can mask it it is not a problem as long as you know the other evidences that you provide to us so we should be able to kind of 
have certain correlation with whatever things that you give if we are able to verify something then it is fine otherwise we will mention in the comment and tell you as to why it is rejected or why is that you have secured less marks mm -hmm. okay got it thank you thank you so much no problem next question so basically uh, vedan what uh, this, this this is for all basically so if you are giving us a data right any data you are giving us we are not uh, taking your data and downloading it what you can do you can just uh, input your data in the midterm or in a proposal we don't need any data but a midterm we need your data you can give us a view option we don't want a download option right we don't want to download your data you can give us a, a view option for the uh, verification and once it is over you can delete the document right you can remove the ss right so we are not able to uh, we are not uh, want your data to be uh, there for a longer time so just for a bit term submission if you are uh, submitting the data we can have a view option we can verify okay the data is fine then you can remove the data and at the time of viva in case the examiner is asking then you can uh, just show him yeah. the data right so we don't want any data from your side we are not involved in any of the data uh, act, uh, data activity or data management from uh, like from our uh, team side right we only want to view the data for authenticity okay sir thank you that answers my question yeah so suppose there is no video you lose marks and uh, you know establishing credibility is extremely important because there was a question in the chat so if there is no video there is no marks and if there are no uh, ways in which you can help us you know believe that it is this thing then we cannot evaluate the project further so it is a must requirement it is a something which is a necessary requirement okay uh, we go to uh, the next question uh, so it is uh, shreya narayanan then we have kartik ashik and uh, lokanath sai yeah please in that order sir i think uh, uh, you have missed me yeah devesh sorry please go ahead yeah thank you sir sir uh, there is a friend of mine he has a startup uh, startup of uh, peanut butter so what he does he actually uh, sells the peanut butter on amazon and uh, amazon actually uh, maintains the uh, data the data uh, about uh, the customer id and the sale all this data is uh, stored in their uh, server and uh, whenever uh, that friend uh, if he wants to extract that data that data uh, can automatically be downloaded in an uh, excel uh, file yeah so uh, so uh, is it okay if i use that data yeah 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 that's fine that's fine yeah yeah that's fine no problem no problem with that okay sir, yeah, yeah. sir that's fine. Uh, the second okay sir yeah. the second yeah. question is uh, most of the small scale businesses actually are involved in uh, tax evasion and uh, uh, that is why uh, they are actually hesitant in uh, sharing the uh, details related to the uh, transactions and all uh, no, even the inventory uh, and all. So, yeah. So uh, again, as I said, uh, there are multiple problems which a business have, right? So that is why I wrote problem or problems. Now, what you do is that uh, let's say that you like a particular problem and then you kind of probe them further. Okay. Uh, that okay? Can you give me this, this, this? Because then once you have an interaction, you will get an idea of what are the different variables you need to address that particular problem. Correct. So if the answer is yes, if he or she is able to give data, you can go with that. If no, you can go to the next one. So this is the process that you follow. Uh, sir. Uh, so uh, can I just keep the uh, name of that business entity or the shop or the business owners anonymous? No, anonymous is fine. As I said, anonymous is okay as long as you are giving us some other documents wherein we can establish credibility. If the answer is no, then you know, so it again depends. We'll have to verify your document, what you're saying. And if the answer is yes, then we can proceed. Otherwise, you know, it, it would lead to rejection. So we'll have to, it is case by case basis, right? Only once you submit, I'll be able to comment on that. Sir, uh, what are okay, the uh, doc, what are the sources of credibility? So we have shared oh. in the rubrics. If we have shared the rubrics uh, in the rubrics, please go and have a read today. So again, we will have a session uh, next week. So that is when you will it will be more clearer. So we have just sent the documents. Do have a read of all the documents. It will not take you much time. All the 15 documents in total should take you one and a half hours. That's it. OK. So yeah. So Ashwin, I will just clarify some of the basic docu uh, basic basic doubts, which I'm seeing in the chat report. So, so some other doubts, uh, some of the things actually which uh, you people are asking, uh, maybe regarding the video inspection. Uh, so there are uh, basically uh, the video and the proof of originality are required, right? So if you are not submitting the video, 
the first thing I want to say, like video of any language is fine. We, language is not a barrier. If you are communicating with a business, it should be fine. Uh, but it should be a professional video. It should not be something like you are chatting with your friend in a room, right? It should be recorded on the particular place and uh, it should be a professional. It should not be something like looking. Uh, previously, what, what what happens like uh, uh, one of the students, he has submitted, uh, the, he has attached the photos uh, where he and the other he other person he was saying it as a owner they are just in the birthday party and he has submitted the video so that type of thing should not be professional and we are not accepting yep. so the video length should be small it should be a uh, we are not asking you uh, like if you are uh, if you the, uh, from where you are arranging the data if it is uh, uh, not in your location then you can have a g meet you can just record the g meet for five seconds right and you can just share the meeting recording with us right the other thing, some people are uh, feeling shy. So in that case, what you can do, just you can just don't ask them to uh, uh, have a communication, one to one communication and you can record. Just you can just have a chit chat and that chit chat also you can record in an uh, organization where you are uh, going to take the data, right? If it is a shop, you can just stand in front of shop, just ask somebody to record the video and just you ask a common question with him. So it should be authenticated. Uh, so video is not a rejection criteria, but obviously, uh, if somebody is uh, giving the video and somebody is not giving the video, there should be marked detection, right? Because we have to uh, evaluate everyone on the same platform. So if the differences should be there, then obviously the marks deduction should be there. But it is not a rejection criteria as soon as uh, the authenticity will be there for the data, right? The other thing is that uh, uh, for uh, like if uh, proof of originality, uh, the document is like required, letter is required. So the, it should be in the letter head. It should not be something like you have uh, written something and you have submitted with any of the signature. If the data, uh, if you don't have a, uh, if the company don't have a letter head, then you can have, uh, uh, you can make a, a letter, but it should be signed as well as sealed. Unless and until it is not uh, sealed by the company or whatever the organization it is, it is not acceptable. It is not considered as the proof of, uh, proof of originality because anybody can do a sign and he can submit it, right? So it should be something authenticated. The next thing which I want to uh, say, like uh, there are multiple cycles. So this is the important point I need to focus, uh, which we are getting a lot of queries on. Uh, so we have a multiple, we have one term, right? Like you have registered in January and it should go up to May or April, right? So this is the this is known as a term. This whole uh, duration of four months is a term, right? In this term, you have multiple cycles, right? So in January, we have a three cycles in which you can submit a proposal, a term, and uh, your final submission, right? Similarly, every month cycles are coming. So we are you are not bounded to submit on particular cycle. It depends upon your data. It depends upon the project availability. It depends upon once your submission is finished, right? Once you are completed with the submission, you can submit it any of the cycles. But what is happening? We are seeing a trend in the previous term. Uh, students are uh, just waiting for an end for the last cycle and they are getting panicked up, right? So don't do it. Just at least try to submit a proposal in the first first cycle or second cycle, whatever is feasible for you. So when you are submitting a proposal, right, you are getting a feedback, right? Whether it is a business problem or not, right? If it is a business problem, then one obstacles you have removed, right? Then you have a business problem, you have a business, then you can just submit the uh, next submissions. You can take your time and after then you can submit a submission. The other thing I want to say is uh, regarding the data, uh, so a lot of th people are asking how much data should be needed, how much data should be needed. So the data should not be a less than three months because if it is a less than three months, you're not getting anything. If you are, you want to see a weekly trend, if you want to see a monthly trend, right? Repeatability is there in the data in different variables, then at least you can have a rich data. Yeah, right? If you want to go like to... Uh... Yeah. one point here so uh, it was a good point that he mentioned so let's say that i'm doing it on uh, zoom cars okay so um, uh, let's say that the business that i've reached out to is zoom cars now uh, can i do something with one month data that is available the answer is yes perhaps the insights that i might get is not much now why 
the reason might be you know that uh, on a particular month let us say it is the month of january the demand may not be much the demand could be more somewhere in the end of march april when you know kids have holidays or during the holiday seasons so let us say that when you do it for a longer time period you would have also learned from statistics that more the sample size is always good right because you have much confidence in what you are reporting so when you have a larger time period what happens is that you are able to see trends so going back to the example of zoom cars let's say we did it in january we are not able to see much trends we did it for two months you are able to see certain trends but as you progress further you might see that okay on a weekday you know this particular car is going more this is going less this particular season uh, you know we have people from this particular you you can divide into segments right you can identify the different customer segments and then craft it which cannot happen when you are doing it with a smaller time period so yeah. that is why aditya has suggested that much is always better okay yeah but it varies on a case to case basis uh, uh so uh, shreya oh, yeah that that's all from my side maybe we can take some more questions yeah, so we will take if your all question the is clear yeah if your question is clear one. from whatever yeah 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 whatever i explained if your question is clear then you can uh, lower your hand and uh, yeah. if it is not related to what i explained and dr ashwin explained you can raise your hand and you can ask Shreya, please go ahead. Uh, could you, can you hear me, sir? Yep. Yeah. Uh, sir, could you please list out the necessary uh, requirements for verification or like the authentication of data when we collect it from a secondary source? Yeah, so from the secondary source, what we have mentioned is you have to clearly tell us, uh, provide us the links of the repository from where you've done it. And what we, uh, I mean, you would have to put it as a Google link or things like that, that where you have collected, what was the problem you identified? I mean, there, you know, how do you identify a problem? Perhaps if it is written or do you have some reports which kind of says that, okay, the, it is, the sales is going down or the profitability or revenue is it? And you do reverse engineering and understand the problem, right? The probability that you find a problem straight away is different is not possible in this case because you have certain data sets so you might have to reverse engineer and take it back and that is why we would want you to share all these details wherein we can go back and have a relook at it is it okay so is yeah, it okay so if i share the link of the website no not just link of the website from wherever you ah. collected the data you know the places from where i mean suppose you've taken any data set or what any information that you've taken all these details are to be provided to us so this is what we would be interested in. Okay, so, so let's um, say that, yeah, let's say that suppose you have given us certain graphs uh, and that is something which we have found in some repository, then it is zero because that is not something which you have done. So for that reason, yeah. yeah. So whatever you give, it will be subjected to cross-checking and since it is secondary data, the grades awarded would be D and E only. Yeah. So one more question I want to give you all, right? So basically, if you are taking a data, for, secondary data from some of the source, right? If the analysis is same, so our software will said uh, we say it is copied, then both of the re reports will get rejected. So be careful when you are taking a data; it should not be copied because once we put in the software, it will, it will show 100% copy, and we will check with our database as well whatever the reports we are having previously in the previous cycles, previous terms. So we can verify it. If it is copied, then it's a problem for you. You have to do it again. So uh, we are not, that's why I and Dr. Ashwin are not suggesting you to go for a secondary data, but it is your choice. We are not able to comment it on, but this is a caution point, which you have to think it up. Uh, because if it, the problem is statement, if you are taking a data from Google or from GitHub or Kaggle, right? There is some uh, common things are there for the data. You are taking a common data. You are putting a same problem statement, then it will be an issue. So just be careful with these things when you're going to submit because it will waste your time if it is get rejected. Uh, so yeah, so in that sense, say you have to uh, be more careful from where you are taking the data, what type of data, what type of analysis you are going to use. So these things you have to uh, find it out a way to get it through, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so Shreya, if you're done, we have Mohammad Ashik and then Lokanath Sai, Giri Subramanya, Rohit Kumar. So yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, I think no, I missed... uh, no, we are, we are, we are, we are going in the order. So please raise your hands. So um, I, I, I already would already raised my hands. Uh... No, but I don't see you in the list. It is at the end. So I, I'm yeah. just following the order. So oh, I'll go with Mohammed Ashik. Sir, am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Sir, I'm going to be collecting data from a wholesale shop. He's like a good friend of my father. 
like okay. what is the first mm-hmm. thing to do after him agreeing me like to give the data yeah so that's what i said the um, the objective is not to collect data the objective is first that you speak to the business okay in your case the business is identified so you have a casual interaction with them right you know how is your business going what are the challenges that you're facing go do some reading about the business also right so to give you an example when we go for any job interviews what we do is something called as pre approach this i will be covering in the next one two weeks from now pre approach is you find try to find information about the business before you actually meet them face to face so similarly you find certain information about that business about the competition speak to him and he will be sharing and then you know you have an interactions and the more and more questions that you ask him mix of different open ended probing questions and all that and that is when he may come up with a particular problem for you and that is how that is the uh, you know pathway you have to take not collecting data straight away speak to them try to understand what challenges are they facing are what attempts are they making to kind of you know uh, to solve these challenges depends so on and so forth so it is just like that so this is the pathway you have to follow okay if i don't get any problems from the company what should i do next? you 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 will get a problem from the company that is why the right mix of question questioning is very very important every business has problems okay so the thing is every business okay i'll i'll answer to you the second part so we had one student his name was funny i re- remember this because um, he did a biz- he did a capstone project with a, a very famous pharmacy in hyderabad which had a very good turnover which had in crores now basically it was a structured business and they had all set processes in place now what happened was that they did they said that they did not have any problems uh so later what we did was that we they gave the data sets and we reverse engineered it and what we found out was that the problem of stockouts now there was a certain drug so let's say that it got over on a monday so then you typically expect it to be stocked on that day or the next day right so what happened was that it was missed and it was getting stocked after 4 or 5 days and they found out that because of this particular process they lost close to 25 lakhs in a month okay so this was done after reverse engineering it so that is what it did so he followed a different approach so this is what you have to do next but then my suggestion is once you speak to them ask them different questions i have sent a document typically on the seven steps of selling the pyramid read it you will get some ideas the right questioning approach will help person speak to you more and when this person speaks to you more and more when you keep on questioning it doesn't happen in one go a meeting could be like 3 to 4 it could go up to 10 to 12 also but you know the more and more you have a connect and you establish a connect and that is when the person would kind of tell you more so this is the approach you process you need to follow okay yeah so one more thing i want to say like uh, uh, once you are submitting the, your proposal uh, or any of the submission so there is no option if you are getting a lesser mark you can submit it again because we are having a registration of 2500 students so every students are doing the same thing then it will be hectic for us right so you don't have any option to just uh, uh, you have a option for devolution in in the worst case if you are uh, uh, finding it uh, the comments are not useful but there is a chances if you are going to reevaluate your report there is a chances your marks will increase or decrease also right so these are the things there is no option for the re, uh, for uh, just resubmission if you are getting a lesser marks in case if the business is not uh, ready to give you the data then only in certain cases only we are giving the approval otherwise there is there should be no approval and we are totally stick with the timelines so be aware of the timeline of the submission post timeline we are not accepting any of uh, your requested to resubmission or to open the portal because the portal is something automated uh, we are not able to open it right uh, once it is closed it is closed it will not take any of the submission right so these are the things uh, i'll re- uh, so one request i want to do any of you can just open your uh, bdm uh, project uh, portal where you need to submit a, a document you can share your screen so that i can just tell you where the documents are uh, we have put the documents because uh i think i'm getting a lot of request for access of the document uh, so this is not a way to uh, uh, just go through the document any of you uh, just open the bdm portal uh, where you have to uh, project portal uh, and share the screen i'll tell you where the documents are sir uh, the actually when we uh, when we click the bdm portal uh, project portal it says you are not subscribed for this aditya so anyone who have registered no no yes, aditya it is it is going to take them uh, one more uh, week so that is what has been said it is okay. still under process so uh, that we can do it for a later reason okay we will go with the questions okay fine uh, uh, loknath sai giri subramanya rohit and anu mittal yes good evening sir yes 
thank you for insightful session and thank you so much for providing such clear and detailed documents where you have worked so hard for us and the question i have is if there is any restriction in the size of the organization which we choose it is because no, I... my father owns an electrical store hmm. and he is no, the that... only person who that's okay it. yeah no no problem as i said it could be structured and structured it could be your own business um, you know i get to know that it's just your father who is running the store it is fine if it is your own business it is further good right you have all the flexibility everything available at hand maybe you can also help your friends too those who struggle maybe in case if you are will willing to share that also could be done so yeah not a problem okay sir i have one more question i have sir yeah yeah and is it necessary to give me term in the immediate next month after project proposal no. or okay yeah so uh, uh, good that you asked this question so let's say that you make a submission in february you have the option of submitting in uh, uh, like march or if you don't want in march you can also submit it in april okay it is not that you have to submit it immediately you have the time but once you register you have up to two terms to complete which means that you give in february you give in uh, let's say may and then in august you complete it so that's also fine as long as you know you do it within two terms you don't have to pay any fee ex extra fee right but if the spillover happens to the next term that is when you have to uh, pay an extra fee fine okay so uh, that's a summary like when i have submitted my project like uh, project proposal in january i can give mid term in april yeah and final project report i can give in may or june or some other yeah that's what right. is it okay I mean, no no that's what right. uh, you have certain cycles which is defined by the support so i think january term i don't know when it ends so the time it ends is considered one term the next term starts from that so whichever term you finish you know we'll see the start and end point if it is within two terms it is fine okay the start and the end point is what is being seen that's it Okay, sir. Okay, uh, Giri Subramanya. This is my question. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Giri Subramanya, Rohit Kumar, Nandan, and Purushottam. Yeah. Yeah, Giri. Ah, sir, yeah. uh, sir let, let's say I go to a supermarket for this project, and after talking with the owner or somebody there uh, for a few times, uh, okay, if I ask the customers who approach the Go so, and get some questions, and I make a data out of it. Will it be so? You mean you, you, you mean to say surveys, right? You want to design surveys. Yes, surveys you can design. Surveys is still considered as primary this thing. But again, what we insist is that you design surveys based on not just something which you want to do. Let's say that you want to understand satisfaction or something. Let that come from the supermarket where they want to know that okay, attrition is happening, or they're seeing that you know the customer. Uh, you what do you say? Footprints are reducing. In that case, you could do it. So. Design a survey which is in line with the problem. You get, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So the reason, the question which I'm asking, uh, the reason for asking the question should be backed by the data. Okay. No, it's no, that's fine. No, no, uh, it is fine as long as it is helping you address your problem statement. At, see, ultimately, okay. at the end, we don't look at analysis. What we first look at is what is your problem statement. If your analysis is extremely good, but the problem statement is not in line, your analysis is not matching your problem statement, it is rejected. So the first and foremost thing is identifying the right problem. If the problem is right, the rest things follow, uh, go in place. If if your problem is something and your analysis is something, there is no correlation, which is zero, right? Okay. So the question yeah. should be in line with the. Problem. No, not the question. The problem statement, the analysis should be in line with everything. It is the objective okay. that drives the methodology, not the other way around. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question, Rohit Kumar. Hi sir, uh, good evening sir. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I have registered for the project in May 2023, and uh, I completed my midterm submission in September term. But I could not make the okay. final submission in last term, so I just want to complete it in uh, this January 2024 term. So is it okay. acceptable? I should start from uh, where I left uh, no, left no. off in the you, previous you, term. Uh, so now you will be submitting directly the final because uh, you have completed till midterm. You just submit the final term, final one. That's it, and then go for the viva voc. Okay, and so my second query is: uh, uh, since my uh, midterm analysis is somewhere related to the uh, final one, because I'll be uh, working on the uh, 
uh, midterm submission to expand uh, expand it to get more insight on the data yeah. so yeah. how much uh, can i cover uh, from the midterm in the final term no see for example in let's say that in midterm you have done three or four graphs in final what we expect you is to explain very much in detail right so that is why if you see the midterm report is around 8 to 10 pages in length the final is around 18 to 20 pages final yes. is a complete polished output we need more graphs more justifications more why what when how where etc so all this should come in the final submission Okay. okay so let's say you have done some three graphs the same thing if you are thinking that it will come to uh, your uh, uh, final no it is not acceptable right so those three graphs plus two three additional things that you want to do plus justifications in detail what when why where how all these things are needed in the final submission that is why it's a complete so basically process. basically i'll explain you uh, uh, you have already seen a movie bahubali right so if you see the teaser you will get some flavor of bahubali what exactly it is when you see a, a trailer then he'll, he'll say like uh, uh, katappa uh, bahubali if there is a fight and something is there but if you see the movie then you know the reason why uh, katappa was uh, uh, killed from uh, like this uh, uh, bahubali movie so it's something like uh, your report is something like that when you are submitting proposal uh, it's something like, like a teaser when we are when you are uh, focusing on the problem statement and once you are submitting a midterm it, it will give us a flavor okay what exactly uh, your uh, project is all about and some of the results with which have uh, just some of the justification you are not expecting uh, your report is uh, filled with all the results you save your results right you put in your bucket and you just put all the results in the final submission with a proper explanation so uh, final submission is your final movie right where you have to explain everything in detail got it Sure, sir. And sir, uh, during the last link, which was uh, going on uh, earlier, Ashwin sir mentioned that uh, there is a removal of midterm submission. So, what was that? I I could not. No, no, no. Hear it midterm properly. submission is not there for your secondary data. So, what we have done now is that midterm sub. So, for those who want to do secondary data analysis, for them there are only two pathways. One is proposal and final submission. So that is what I said. So the, okay, yours sir, is primary sir. data. Yours is primary data. Yes. You have four levels. They have three levels of submission. That's it. That's the only difference. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we go to the next one. Nandan, Purushottaman, Divyang, and Madhusudanan. Uh, yeah. Nandan Kumar. Nandan. Not there. Okay. Uh, Purushottaman. Yeah. Hi, sir. Uh, so yeah. my question is that I'm doing a project on and comparative uh, analysis, compared to trend analysis between uh, generic firecrackers and green firecrackers. Okay. So I have collected some data, uh, like around two months of the data from each of these uh, companies. Okay. So uh, if you look at the uh, green firecrackers, the, the revenue and other sales factors are uh, pretty much uh, like uh, uh, versatile. But if you look into the generic uh, thing, the data which I've acquired, it's not uh, that there are many factors which influence uh, the data. Some production mm -hmm. quality might have reduced the revenue. Uh, so I'm not able to uh, do a uh, very good analysis on that. So if I add some synthetic data, it will not be legitimate. So have a no, no, question. No. Uh, there is no synthetic data just uh, synthetic in the sense you artificially create some data and do that that is what you mean right and uh, uh, not in that sense but uh, let's say uh, the the owner has uh, gen generically said that this is the average uh, you know, median sales you have done for the other month so if i can uh, try okay, to... I mean, as long as see the thing is certain things uh, you will have to go with what they have given right so if he says yeah. that okay i go got that that's something which is not available but something which he's saying right something which is yeah. not available directly but you can just take that that based on the interaction and these numbers given you're considering this as a particular what do you say start point and you're making a comparison that is okay that's okay that's oh. fine but i'm just really worried about uh, like my uh, results will not be much uh, good no, so see, i'm just worried if is, would, no, uh, that's right. you have to do an analysis for everything you have to experiment no nothing yeah. uh, works directly you do it you see so that time you'll get to know if there are outliers or not so let's say that he has given you a number and then when you do it, everything is going up and down. He's saying that, okay, we did so much X sales and we had X plus Y profits. But let's say when you run the analysis with those numbers, you will see that it is nowhere close to what he has said. Then you know that that particular number itself is wrong, right? So, uh, so yeah. that we only get to know at a T plus one time period. So you have to yeah. do that and then we'll get to know. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. 
no problem one uh, suggestion i want to give uh, one suggestion i want to give you all like basically don't focus on a single business problem problem statement right because what is happening if you are considering only the one problem statement and after a certain time you are not getting a data for that then you uh, you have to uh, do the project again so try to make a, a multiple problem statement like two three to four problem statement so that if you are not getting a data related to one problem statement number one then you have option to complete the project with problem statement two or three so just don't stick with only one problem statement try to find out multiple problem statements not too much 10 or 20 right it should be like three to four or five that is fine and then you can just start the process so that you have you are on a safer side right yeah, yeah. so just try to yeah, remember this is, this. this is actually a good point which aditya mentioned because at times what happens is that some of you go with one problem statement and later see that it is not working out in such cases having multiple problem statement at times could be of help because when you do a particular analysis you might see that okay this is not working but it is working for something else so uh, that's a very good insight from aditya okay uh, we have uh, uh, divyang panchasara madhusudanan uh, soham and then Himan. Yes. Divyang is here. Divyang Panchasara. Divyang, I cannot hear you. Okay, uh, we go for the next one. Uh, we have uh, Madhusudan and Narsimhan. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me. Hi, sirs. Um, thank you for the detailed presentation. Um, and uh, I actually wanted to ask a few questions. You know, can we give a declaration saying uh, that we will we intend to do it with the primary data, and later, um, if it doesn't actually work out, no, the, then which means then no. no. If, uh, the thing is, if you do with primary and this thing, see, these are two. There are two separate portals. Okay, for primary data, you have one portal. For secondary data, you have a separate portal. So if your primary data you do and it doesn't work out, then you have to start from the beginning in the other one, right? So. This pathway, suppose you're doing primary data, let's say you finished midterm this month and then you're doing final after five, six months, it's okay. But that doesn't work for secondary data. That transfer is not happening across secondary data. Okay. Hmm. Uh, no, that if, 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 I'm, if the primary data for some reason is not working out, then they have to start from the proposal stage. You again. have to start from the proposal stage again in secondary data. Okay. But again, for the secondary data, as I said, it is only DE grades and we just give acceptance. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, the sincere efforts will be made to do it with the primary data. But yeah, you know, see, uh, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would say yeah. that you just give a try. It's always like selling, right? You know, not everybody can sell. But when you kind of put in genuine efforts, you end up doing it. So uh, always start with the positive and optimistic mindset and remain optimistic. So this is the way ahead. So you, you will be able to do it. Sure, thanks. I'm only seeing okay. challenges from the office front. So that's why I was no, asking. No, it shouldn't, shouldn't uh, be a problem. And the so, there is another one. I yeah. know also on a on a on a personal front, I um I, I'm a, I have registered for the courses this term, but I'm seeing some challenges due to the personal situation of continuing this particular term. Is there okay. a process now to uh, you know drop for this particular uh, term? And so then that you have to one. check with the support. Uh, you please write to them, and uh, you have to check. I have already I have already written. Yeah, so uh, maybe you can, a... you can yeah you can write to Sinduja at study.itm.ac.in and maybe she'll be able to help you out with that. We are not aware of registrations and other details. All right. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah, Karthik, okay. Thank you. Uh, you're dropping a message again and again. Uh, so basically, you can wait for some time. All the documents are uploaded in the drive, and you don't have access right now. We have so already given more time. than enough documents. Yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, we have already created whatever documents we could. No more documents after this. So if you are referring to the uh, detailed documents for secondary data, for secondary data, what I have said is that the contents are the same. Go back to the uh, documents which are mentioned and have a look at it. That's it. That's the only difference. Primary data, you are doing it that way. That means you are collecting the data from the business or you are doing surveys and doing it in secondary data, you do it from a repository. The rest, all the contents, we have a common document. Okay. You can refer to that and get it done. Suggest okay. So and uh, the document suggests uh, uh, one. Yeah. One more thing I want to clarify. Uh, one, uh, one more thing I want to clarify. Uh, the thing is that, like uh, uh, the uh, in your portal, when you are starting the project, the document from IIT will already be uploaded under your name. That this is the project you are going to do it, and this is what uh, should be the content of the project. So don't send us a mail for a document like it will directly upload to your portal. 
and you can see in the portal itself like in case if you are not getting after 15 to 20 days then you can let us know uh, for the documents uh, for a letter from the organization from iit madras we are supplying the letter and it, you can show that letter to the organization so it will be automatically uploaded there is no need to send us a separate mail like uh, we need a document it, you can check your portal it should upload it should be uploaded uploaded automatically if it is not uploaded you can just send a mail to the support team right yeah yeah now you sir, can continue. Sorry, sir, I had just one more question before we move on to the next question. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. All the documents that uh, you know you have shared, are they under the um, uh, you know the, the students dashboard under the current project no, section? No, no, it's it's in it... the current dashboard. But what we have also done is for that reason, I have sent it on email. All the documents I have sent it again. So in case okay. you are not able to find the reason behind sending able... them is yeah. So then it's fine. Whatever I have sent in the mail, you consider that. That's it. That is the very purpose of sending everything on email. Thank you. Okay, and I have sent the uh, feedback form. Please request you to fill it because once you fill in the feedback, we will also get to know what is that you want. Accordingly, we can tailor made. We can make sessions for you. Tailor made sessions um, based on what you want. In case you want something on data analysis, if you have not understood uh, stats, we could do something on that um, or something like that. Okay, or maybe on something linking to services, marketing, operations, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, so uh, we proceed to Soham. Soham Palit. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, like um, uh, for the video proof, in spite of the video proof, can we just use uh, something like letterhead with stamp sign? No, no. Will this uh, video out? video proof? If it is not there, it is straight reject. So if you okay. don't give us a video, uh, because see, it is essential. Uh, that is why when we say we need proof, we are very particular on three things: that we need to have pictures, different pictures, so on and so forth. We need to have a video of your interaction with the owner or this thing. So that is the only way where credibility is established. What I also wanted to mention here is that if that is not provided, we would not be able to proceed it further because there is no credibility established. That is a very important step for us because that is how we cross verify things. Yes, data is one way, but then we need this also so that we do a triangulation and see if there is, you know, if there is some similarity. So these are the ways okay. where yeah. Uh, what exact kind of things I should ask the owner uh, in the video? So, yes, yeah, so it's not like that. Basically, you kind of have a general uh, kind of interaction. You know, speak about the problem. Don't not exact this thing. So you say that okay, what was the problem that you are having, and uh, how do you think the business is? So there's something called a spin selling. I'll do it in one or two weeks from now. Uh, uh, so which tells you about what are the kind of questions that you need to ask. You ask different open-ended probing questions. Uh, not for today. Uh, one or two weeks from now, I'll take a session, and that is when you'll get more clarity. Okay. And is there any proof required for the data? Like uh, the yes. video proof is required that for is, the owner. That is that is what Aditya mentioned. That uh, there should be a letterhead which kind of says that this particular student of so and so roll number has get, done the project with us, and we confirm that this data has been provided by us. Letterhead um, and stamp and sign. So that's what Aditya okay. had mentioned. Yeah. Okay. And uh, can we uh, cater multiple problem statements in the same project? See, the thing is, uh, I would say that multiple problem statements, see, uh, you have to understand one thing that, you know, sometimes uh, it may not, it, it might be too ambitious, right? Or sometimes it could also happen that, you know, with the data that you have, uh, the one data set itself is able to answer all your problem statements. That could also be the case. But more and more and more, and more when you go, what will happen is instead of converging, you diverge. Okay, and then it becomes difficult for you. So rather what we suggest is take two or three and then find out if not, I mean, that is what Aditya was actually trying to say that, you know, don't go with like 10, 15 and all that maximum like three to four and then see what can happen. But anyways, if there were cases wherein a student had one problem statement, but they had everything done to address that those whatever headers we had asked, they had done it. So in that case, it worked. Yeah, I'm asking this because for the final sub uh, submission, we are supposed to make a project of a very large project, like of 18, 20 pages. Yeah, it so is. That's what. The... So, so when you have the data, you will know that whether you can actually do that much or not. If the answer is no, then you know that you will need more. Correct. Okay. So basically, and it's all the, about the it's all is... about explaining also. Oh. It is all about explaining. See, for example, when we say executive summary or when we say uh, uh, organization background, you you would be explaining, you know. Uh, uh, what do you say? You explain things in much depth, right? So one page goes there, one page goes here. Metadata takes two pages. Explanation of that goes. When we say metadata, it's not just collecting variables. You have to say that why, uh, what are these variables and why did you collect these variables? Okay. So suppose you say that there okay. is a stock out. 
and now you are collecting data on opening and closing stock it is not enough if it is insufficient if you just mention opening and closing stock rather you say that you have taken opening stock because this helps address this closing stock because this helps address this you you get the point what is that meaning okay. and why is that you have taken justification everything is to be justified okay so basically we have to cater only one problem statement only in the entire project no no not one you can do two or three also but as long as you are able to meet all the requirements we have stated if you are not able okay. to meet the requirements you might want more as i said okay. if it is broad one is enough if it is not then you may need more okay okay and okay. one last question is can we use two to three years old data instead of the latest data see you mentioned that it is your own business right so that is what i saw yeah. i i wrote to you in chat then i don't see a problem in this thing if you have older insights there is no problem in using it but you know the insights might not be of much help to your father okay okay so okay. if you have newer data sets what would happen is that uh, see we are not discouraging you from doing old you can do it as your choice but if it is if it is my business i would do it with a newer data set because the insights that i share can help me solve my current problems whatever insights yeah, okay. that you give might not be of help to your dad right so that is why from yeah. that angle i am telling it okay, okay. Yeah, so basically yeah. if you see i will i'll just add on this on this point if you see there is a covid there is a different uh, season so something is happening so if you take that data that is a, a data which is on a different situation right so might be if you are yeah. trying to forecast anything or might be you are trying to say interpret anything for the future you won't be able to interpret on that particular situation because it is not a regular situation which is coming uh, every time or it is uh, repeatability is there in that particular data right so it's a one time data if you are comparing your results from that data it, uh, the future trend will not come uh, correct right so in that case you have to see if you have two year data then then it is fine just try to take a latest data and just compare the result what exactly uh, their uh, uh, trend was there previously two years what exactly the trend is coming and what is the current trend so from there you can just come up with some uh, fruitful uh, results or fruitful feedback which might help you right okay 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 thanks a lot uh, sir uh, can i speak yeah, yeah. this is nandan uh, uh, this is uh, Nandan. Nandan. I'm, yeah, Nandan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nandan, go I'm ahead. joining from other yeah. uh, device because my device got stuck. It's oh, no problem. I'm able to speak with oh. the older one. Um, so uh, the thing is, like, uh, I'm looking at a data which has a bigger volume in the sense, like, it's kind of a, uh, uh, in terms of GB. How, like, when you say that I have to share the data to you, how am I supposed to do it as a backup file or? No, no, that's what you share it as a drive link, right? You just provide as a link and you give access. And once your evaluation is done, you can just uh, remove it, everything. Okay. So the, the other question is like, uh, I'm actually uh, have been uh, discussing with the uh, AGM of our organization. Okay. Uh, uh, it's kind of a, like a OEM where they manufacture cars. So mm -hmm. it's the uh, data which I'm looking at, it's kind of confidential. I've okay. been speaking with them. It's kind of uh, more related to the direct operations. Okay. So direct production in the sense. So uh, I've been interacting with them for past three months. I'm uh, lucky that I, I had access to your older videos. Okay. So I, I was approaching him everything. It's It looks like they are ready to give. But okay. only thing is like uh, when I ask about that, I have to get a letter pad approval. So then they are a little bit reluctant. They are saying it's against the organization policy. I cannot share. No, you you just you see the thing is you can just say that it is being purged after this thing. If you want, you can write an email to me and I can write clarifying this that we just want this to be the credibility part to be established. And that is why we are doing it. So in some cases where the organizations were reluctant, we wrote back to say that we just want to check this particular thing. Right. So in that cases, the organizations were also flexible. And we said that we purge it because it is IIT Madras. Just like you have an NDA, we also have an NDA too. So we are also bound by that. OK. So when you say the video interaction, what is being expected? Because I have already been speaking with them for past three months. Yeah, video so... interaction is basically, we said that it is three to eight minutes. You can say that uh, if you have finished the project, what you could uh, kind of do is, if you're starting the project, you can say that, OK, what is your business all about? And what kind of uh, problems do you face? And uh, what what is that you've done until now? And what do you expect me to do? I mean, what is that you would expect? Um, me to do and so on and so forth so you kind of have a general interaction explaining about the you do something called a spin which i'll cover a week or two from now but in case if you are interested in that i have put a link in the chat box you can go and have a look at my video so this is okay. something which i did for the last term 
uh, you guys can go and have a look at it in case you want to do it earlier i have put the video link in the chat box go and True. have a look at uh, it. the other thing is i'm staying in uk actually my mm -hmm. so uh, the process... zoom. do it in zoom that's it <laughs> okay yeah. so uh record the so, video call and then send it to you yeah so, record the video call and uh, download cool. it keep it between three to eight minutes and uh, download send it to us that's it uh, what about the previously letter? Previously, we had it... some of the students. Is previously, it, uh... we had some of the students who are located in UK, Dubai, and all. So they have recorded the video meeting, and as a proof of originality, what they have done, they have submitted a mail from the official email ID of the company as a proof of originality. Yeah, that also. Okay. Is Can that be accepted, like a yeah. mail from the original email ID of the organization? Yeah, I mean, we also have to check your other parts, no? It is too early to comment on that until and unless we see it. Because let's say that you ask your friend to send it to us and then later. So we have to check. Uh, you know, it's a case-to-case -case basis. So I have to check it and then we will comment. Okay. 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 Yeah. So Thank if you. we see some kind of correlation between everything, then we are okay with that. But if we don't see correlation, then it's difficult. So that's why let's see it and then decide. Okay. Okay, okay. then. Yeah. yeah. And uh, next it is uh, Himanshu Saini, Ar Arko Mukherjee, yeah. Adarshom. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, so my question is, uh, suppose I'm working with a business like uh, a dairy business and uh, suppose I got data from there and make I did make some analysis uh, with that data. Uh, now, I, if I want to, to like make recommendation for that business, I use some government website like Sekari. Uh, like ah, which means you yeah you see i understand what you're saying that you want to make a comparison with that and then yeah, you want yeah. to say so see one thing is the insights that you give has to come out from your data okay that is point number one and then you can see what percentage of this is matching with that when you're making a comparison mm -hmm. you, if if i'm i can straight away say that okay increase the margins just by my intuition increase the margins and that would give you a more of this thing but is that my data saying the answer is no so whenever you are making giving certain insights it should be driven by your data and not by your intuition now what are the ways to increase revenues the ways to increase revenue is that you cut down costs you increase your market share, so on and so forth, right? Now, this is just that something which I'm telling you just like that, even without doing any analysis. Mm -hmm. But this is if this is something which is emerging out from your analysis, then you can make this statement. And then you can say that in addition to this, I'm doing a further comparative analysis with this. And these are additional recommendations. So you yeah. can branch it into two parts. One is the insights coming out from your analysis. And then the insights which is coming from the other one, but that will not have weightage when we evaluate it. We will not give marks for that. These are extra fillers, but that will not have weightage. So we cannot so we cannot also add the attributes of the other data. You can you can mention that you can mention why no. So that is why I was saying that you okay, know. Okay, but it's not uh, like yeah, it's not, not it's not grade. It. Yeah, no, we'll not grade it. Okay, because uh, it is not coming from what problem you are trying to investigate. No, it is coming from something else. Oh, okay. So, so there is no correlation. On the, my second question is uh, like I work. I approach a business and uh, I I got a good uh, positive response, but like I got to know about his business, got to know about the problem statements. I had uh, a few of meetings, but uh, but uh, at the end, he's not willing to give me the data. Then so this is uh, uh, this is called as jilting actually. So uh, in the link that I have actually shared just now, uh, you have one of my YouTube link videos. Uh, go and have a look at it, how to approach so on and so forth. When a person says no, it is also important to understand why he or she said a no, right? So I have kind of explained that. Just go and have a look at it. And how is that you have to address? So if a person says no right away, you don't give up, right? You try to understand like why it has happened or are there certain objections which you couldn't have answered at that stage? You have to give confidence. And even despite that, if he or she says no, then you cannot do anything, right? So uh, we have we have sent you that. So I've sent you one of my link. I also request everybody to please fill in the feedback because once you fill in the feedback, it would also help us plan better, kind of do more sessions, so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so my, so my last question, sir. Uh, like, uh, can I like, if someone is not uh, willing to provide me the revenue uh, data, so can I work only the inventory data here? Like no, no. One second. The, the, the your question itself is wrong. As I said. The objective is not to collect data. The objective is to reach out to a business 
understand the problems that they are facing and then collect data pertaining to the problem how did you decide you have decided a priori or collecting revenue data but what is the problem there is no problem at all you get the point you are doing the neck other way around you are actually getting the data and then so you have to first identify the problem and then collect data pertaining to that problem not okay. getting the data in advance okay. so that so, means your, so that is where your approach is wrong yeah yeah okay got it thank you sir yeah thank you Okay. Uh, the next ones. Uh, Arco. Uh, other. Yeah. 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 Good evening, sir. Yeah, uh, sir. Actually, uh, initially there is a main chat box. Uh, I can't able to post also. So I have sent you and also Aditya sir an email. So actually in 2023 Feb, uh, I have submitted my initial proposal and it was accepted. But when I, when I received the data from the organization, I found that uh, uh, nowhere uh, means I can't do any analysis or anything. There is actually no data at all in that way. So then I prepared a format and given them. And uh, in this year, I have uh, uh, Jan, I received uh, their Excel data uh, as per the format, uh, their sales data, whatever it is related to problem statement. And uh, they have given a one year full data. Now thing okay. is that already two, two uh, terms are uh, there and it is now accepted also. So can I go ahead with the, the uh, submission for yeah, the second? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No problem. So even wherever okay. you have stopped, no, you started from there. That's it. Okay, you come. Yeah, exactly. The because the because the yeah. data was not sufficient and also I I don't want to uh, yeah, means yeah. solve the problem of this. That's why I stayed. No, no, no. Uh, no, no. We understand. So that's perfectly fine. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. For no this problem. is my query. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. Adarsham. Yes. Yeah. So actually I am approaching uh, like uh, my uncle. Uh, he actually uh, has a, is a tax advocate and has a tax consultancy firm. Would that be considered an uh, ideal business? Tax consultant. Uh, um, do you mean something like uh, what do you say a CA, a chartered accountant, or something? Yeah, so, uh, he uh, he's a tax advisor uh, to. Uh, no, does he have? Does, no, no. Does he have his or I mean his business is doing all this accounting and other things? Yeah. Is it like that? Is it like CA yeah. kind of doing accounting and all that? Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah. He also does accounting and also uh, tax submission and. Uh, uh, pan uh, in, uh, related to tax. I have haven't gone into the depths of it, but uh, yeah, I, have I mean, the, the... if it is his own business, then it is fine. I mean, it looks like you know his own business, then it is okay. It's not a problem. Yeah, yeah you can do business. in this because because they have a customers, right? If uh, some of uh, if he is doing a taxation for somebody, right? So he has a customer uh, database or some customers are associated with them. So you can see how many customers are existing in previous uh, two to three years, how many new customers are coming, and what exactly a, a pricing plans they are having, which can complete in the market, right? So from I'm not saying it should be a concrete uh, uh, like approach to uh, go for a pro, uh, for analyzing the project, but you can just see in this particular way if you have uh, something like a small organization, like previously uh, one of the student he has done a uh, analysis on uh, LIC agent, right? LIC agent uh, who is giving a policies and all. So similar way you can just do the analysis where you can just identify, okay, these are the potential customer, existing customers, whether they are, uh, how, why the customers uh, left him and uh, 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 going to the other uh, company as well. So these things you have to find it out and you can just, it's a good take, like it depends upon you, how you are going to formulate the business problem. And from there, you can just do a competitive analysis. How much uh, should be there a market uh, rates and how much he's taking? You can have a different variables and you can identify. So this way you can approach the business, right? Yeah. Okay, that clears my question. Thank you. Okay, Uma and uh, then Shankar and then Nusrat. Yeah, um, sir, so I'm a housewife doing this program. So I have I don't have many interactions with the company or firm. So I have asked my husband to collect data. So from your session, I understood that's not possible, right? Uh, I'll get the genuine letter pad or photos and things, but uh, mm. I cannot interact with them. There. If possible, I will do it. But uh, mm. as of now, from that's not allowed then. I can't no, get no. the data. interaction in the sense your husband would be collecting the data for you, right? That's what yeah, you're telling yeah. us. No, yeah. in that case, uh, I mean, if you actually see, then we should award marks to your husband, no? 
So, okay, so that is not allowed, yeah, right? So yeah, I have yeah. to go and yeah, you see, it's it's an opportunity for you, Uma, to go out and you know try this because see, I'll tell you one thing that uh, the objective is learning, right? So when you go out, yeah, it's what very happens difficult, is that, challenging, highly because I, 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 I understand, but the thing is, okay, you you write. I can approach the, nearby shops, but uh, the you data can, you can, analysis is very good with company, like you say, data analysis is also needed. In that case, yeah. company data is uh, it will be good, I thought. But now no, no. Yeah, I have to go company, with company. See, the thing is, the purpose of having an interaction or other things is to establish credibility. You should understand the expense. The idea is not just to do analysis or these things. The idea is to understand from their end what are the problems that they are facing. Because see, certain things the data might tell you some stories, but the reasoning may come only when you have a closer interaction. For example, you might read our documents. We have given fifteen twenty documents, but you might have a better understanding when we explain things to you. So similarly, when you have a interaction with, let's say, the business, they may tell you certain things which might be of much help to you. So that is the reason we were saying. Okay, okay but, but if you go have, nearby shops, I maybe uh, either vendor shops or grocery shops, we may not get a letter pad, things like that, right? No, yeah. it's not like that. In that case, letter pad will not be there, but you'll have pictures, you can get an email done, or you can just say that, okay, this thing, uh, you know, okay. proofs are there. No, there are different ways of uh, getting things done. No? And we do. So, so yeah, Ashwin, also mandatory. I want to point out on this point, I want to, because a lot of questions are coming on this originality uh, that uh, letter had at all. So basically, what you have to do is, uh, the company or a business is small, right? If it is an unorganized business, if, it's, if it is a vegetable shop as well, because previously students has done a project on vegetable shop, ironing shop, they don't have a uh, letterhead and all, right? So what they have done, they have taken, they have made one format, like, okay, this is what the authenticity of data they are having, and they have made a letterhead uh, from their side. They have taken a printout on a paper, and the main thing we are checking is authenticity. So you have, when you are taking a, a document and it is signed, then a stamp should be there, right? Because the stamp shows like okay, this is uh, from uh, the place where you have taken the data. Yeah. Uh, so that stamp is required and you can take our images, right? Yes. You can take our images, you can take an interaction video. The thing is that basically uh, why we are asking this, the question coming in my, your mind, why we are asking this. So the main motive of collecting this document is to authenticate, uh, to authenticate your data, whether you have taken a data or not, right? Yeah. Because uh, these th these things are not uh, something we are creating, right? This is something we are which we are creating based on the students' uh, ha happenings, right? They have taken the data for they are uh, creating a data because of that we are restricting uh, other students to do the authenticity of the data, right? So these things you have to uh, take it up, uh, whatever the possible ways you think, right? These are the possible ways which are helpful for authentic creating authenticity of my data, right? So that ways you can just put to authenticate your data when you're going to take a SIM, right? So in that condition, uh, when you are taking a, a pen card, he'll just refuse and take you back. So the next time when you are going, you are taking three documents or four documents. Okay, so that your when you are going to take a SIM, it will not be rejected, right? It should not. It should not be uh, like the, he'll not give a, a SIM like because of the document. So for that, for the sake of uh, confirming or for the sake of taking the SIM, what what you are going to do? You are taking all the document and you will show him. Look, these are the document I am having. Whatever the document you want, you can take it and just give me a SIM, which will work after an hour or after two hours, which will not stop. Right? Similar way you have to present here. These are the documents I am having, and these are the uh, proof of originality. Uh, uh, these documents are showing as a proof of originality. Whatever is required, they can just refer it. If it is not required, then there is no harm of putting the document, right? You can put it in the drive and you, you can take it back. So whatever the necessary documents you are having, just put in the drive to authenticate, to uh, make your case strong so that your uh, project will not be rejected. For that sake, you can just put all the documents, whatever you have, whatever you think, like these are the documents which uh, will be sufficient for creating the authenticity, right? Okay. And you got my point? I think, yeah, time I think this is a question a lot of people are asking. Maybe it is clear uh, now. And the time yeah, tell me, tell is it okay with the six months of the past six months, or it has to be one year like that? Anything no, no. Happens? As I as I said, uh, more yep, is yep. always a better rumor. But the thing is, as long as it helps you address your problem, that is okay. the answer. That's, so that's sometimes true. maybe from two months also you might be able to do it. Sometimes by okay. three months, sometimes even one year might be less, right? Sometimes even one year might be less. So it depends, right? So as I will tell you. I will give you one example. I will give an example to all, right? So basically, if you are uh, taking a, a, a shop, right? If you are going for a shop, 
and you are taking a data if it is a, a shop he who is selling a, a sweaters who is selling a winter wears then you are taking a, a, a data from them for uh, four months right so what is happening in four months you are going to know okay this is what the sales pattern is but you are uh, not going to uh, find it out okay what exactly the previous uh, 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 sales was or what because you are not getting a repeatability of the season right repeatability of the season is not there so you won't be able to interpret okay this is what happening in this particular year or it is happening for uh, this particular trend is happening for uh, previous two years then if you have an idea of particular like seasons are coming once in a year so if you are getting once and once in a year data then the seasonal comparison or weekly comparison is not possible right so if it is a winter year you won't be able to understand okay in the last winter year what exactly is happened how about the sales it is increasing or decreasing so this is one of the example i am giving so if you have more of the data like for two seasons data three seasons data then you can forecast something from, based on the data you can just find some trend you can do a comparative analysis like this is what the sale uh, in 2023, this is what the sales pattern in 2024. Then you get an idea, okay, the sales patterns is decreasing. Then you can just uh, uh, just have some understanding. You can have a discussion with the business owner. Why this sale is changing per year? There should be something is happening which is going to decrease or increase the sale, right? Per year, per season. Okay, so accordingly they can manage, okay, this is what the sales we are having this year. This is what the obstacles uh, we are having because of that the sales goes down in the previous year. So you will get an idea and you can have, you can give them a suggestion or recommendation, right? So that is why we are uh, saying like whatever the data possible, uh, we are not saying like you can, if he's ignoring a data for uh, uh, after six months, then you can just fight with him and ask him, no, you can give our data for nearly two years and three years. It depends basically, okay, this is what the data he is giving and you can just be able to do it. So it depends like uh, what you are going to do and what exactly if you are going to uh, see the uh, seasonal variation then one season variation data is not sufficient right i hope it is clear to all yes thank you i'm done yeah, thank you sir. okay yeah shankar uh thank you so much sir for explaining all the things in detail uh, sir, my question is uh, like uh, I'm a working professional and uh, mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm working in a health tech company. So if my company mm -hmm. agrees, then can I use my company's data? Is it OK? Yeah, it is fine. We don't have any issues. You can take your company data. Right. Okay. But the authenticity, uh, it should be authenticated from uh, some sources. It should not be something you have taken some data and uh, you have given it to us. Right. Yeah. You can take uh, data from your company as well. We don't have any issues. Right? So in that case, it will be even easier for you to give all the details that we have asked for, right? Because you have everything at hand. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It's basically, uh, basically, uh, I'll, I'll tell you, like, uh, we are not uh, restricting any of the student uh, for some particular business or for, for some particular organization. You are uh, free to take data from anywhere or any of the resources. It should be a primary resource. It should not be secondary resources if you are uh, doing a primary resource, primary project, right? Pri uh, project based on the primary data, right? In that case, you are free. You are free to take data from any of the shops, any of the small shops, any of the big companies. You can take data from uh, Google. You can take data from uh, small shopkeepers also, which are selling the vegetables or food. So it is not a, a restriction. Previously, in the previous. Uh, terms we are getting uh, uh, projects which are uh, from nearly to uh, 125 or 30, 120 uh, 130 domains right students have done the project on 130 different domains where uh, from where they have collected the data so we are not restricting you uh, anywhere you can take data from anywhere but it should be authenticated we are and then we don't have any problem thank you sir thank you so much yeah yeah the next one uh, uh, nusrat hello sir thank you so much for the explanation and my doubt is uh, can i use the clinical audits data sir clinical could you please elaborate on this one Cl clinical audit data yeah i mean what what do you mean by this clinical audit data uh, no so, because my uh, what what yeah. i am understanding clinical audit data will not make any sense because it's something like you are doing uh, auditing data from there, you will not get any trend, right? Because it's something like a business auditing, right? It's a business auditing oh. data you are getting. Oh, it is right? actually. So uh, anyhow, 
there is some criteria they need to use the, the, they need to do sp uh, some test before uh, before something and uh, they are checking like uh, so, some doctors are not doing those uh, tests and they have to analyze them um, uh, that's right uh, so in that case what would be the business problem um, so uh okay oh if it is it, it is uh, if i cannot use that uh can i use the data i'm living in the uk can i use the data from uh india i mean no, no, one no. Of my what, is, what is the what is the business problem i mean ultimately first my more than the data the first point that i'm interested in understanding is what is the problem uh, no uh, I, i'm not uh, if, it, if it is not um uh, I don't have any plan because my husband is a doctor. He's dealing with some. Uh, he has some cl clinical audit data with him here okay. for for his work. Okay. So uh, I, I just wondered if I can use that. Uh, oh, that's right. Again, you... again, the first question is what is the business problem identified? So as long as there is no see, it is not analyzing the data. This is okay, the first yeah. step. Is, the first step is what is the problem? So I would always okay. ask you what is the problem. Now, if you ask, if I run a business and I say that okay, my sales is going down, that is a problem. Okay. Okay. okay so okay. that is the first start point. Now the next question that you would ask me is why is your sales down? Then I would say that okay, it was all going well. Post pandemic, oh. we got hit. Online business oh. came that got impacted, and later we are seeing that customers who are coming to us are migrated to competitors. Now you see that I'm explaining it to you back again. You you get okay. the point. So it okay. all starts with uh, then next step. You'll ask me is okay. Uh, do you have certain certain things to kind of validate what you're saying? And then I say okay. yes. You know our businesses was like this. Following mm -hmm. this one, we see that there is almost a twenty percent you know decrease or something like that. Okay. So okay. that is how you go. So the start point is what is the business problem? Okay. Which okay. In your case so is not addressed. Okay. Okay. Uh, my my cousin has a business. He's uh, in uh, in in Kerala now. Hmm. And can I use his um, business? And can I approach him? And uh, yeah, can I, mean, I? Yes. As long as as long as you know there is a business problem, you can do. You can do it okay. anywhere. It could be your family friend. It could be your own business. We don't mind. Okay. I don't need to visit his shop or anything, right? Because I'm in the UK, so I can you, just. You can do it via Zoom, no? And ask him to send you pictures. See, at the end of the day, see, right now I'm sitting in France, and if I'm just doing it like we interact via Zoom, so we are doing through that. No? So that is how it is. Okay, and uh, it is not clear for me, sir. Like, uh, what is proposal uh, submission? Is it just uh, so, do we need to submit the that, data? For that, no, no. For that, you have to read the rubrics. So whatever we have given in uh, the session today is like. we just wanted to tell you what is what so now your next okay. step is go back read all the document it will take up to 2 hours okay and then you oh. will have an understanding and then after one week when we meet again it will be more okay. clearer so now oh, uh, yeah so now you, the next step for you is to go back and read the documents okay and ask us if there are any questions when we come back next again meet after a week or so week or two you will slowly okay. understand what we are speaking okay so now okay. today it is to yeah. tell you what the project is what are the deliverables of the project and what are the pathways that are available so this is okay. today's thing so basically if you refer the document then you will get an idea just wait okay sir and okay uh, sir i will discuss with my husband and uh, my with my cousin uh, sure. about this and if any problem in his data and uh, my husband is saying like uh, he is uh, he wanted to find out something and uh, uh, what are the number of uh, something if any problem is there can i use this data i mean the clinical audit data so again the question is what is the business problem okay business problem okay so, not where is, i, I don't see a problem okay no i oh, i'll is, tell you i'll tell you if it is a, if you are taking a medical uh, if your uh, husband is something related to a medical clinic right so yeah. there is some footfall from the customer end right uh, the customers are coming uh some of the inquiries are coming but they are not converting in the customers in, in basically on the customer side right there is some sales data in which you are taking a profit if you, you are getting a loss or there is some inventory also right so inventory in the sense you are putting a, you have a clinic and you have uh, some medical store as well so in that condition you can just see what exactly the inventory you are having how much how much money you are blocking per year in the inventory so if you reduce the inventory how much profit should be there so if oh, okay. it is a clinic where multiple doctors are coming right if multiple doctors mm -hmm. are coming so in that case mm -hmm. you can see what exactly uh, the doctor fees should be there how you have to optimize the resources to reduce the doctor fees so in case if doctor is charging per hour right like so you can okay. just try to understand what exactly the pattern of the hospital at what time most of the customers are coming so if the customers oh. are coming at particular time from 6 to 8 right so there is no need to engage the doctor for the whole time if he is charging per hour right 
so if okay, you are yeah. uh, play, uh, if you are arranging a doctor from morning 10 to uh, evening 6 right so in that case you have to pay from morning 10 to evening 6 but if the uh, footfall of the customers are not there then it doesn't mean like uh, he has, he's because he's sitting idea so in this sense uh -huh. you are going to optimize the resources you are increasing the business right so this is in such a way you have to create a business problem you have to understand uh, first what exactly if it is a clinical business what are the problems and what are the bottlenecks the business is facing on so you have to uh, okay. do a, a study before uh, approaching the business right and then you okay. have to take a call what exactly the data is. yeah Okay, it is actually a service data, like uh, how yeah, well the doctors are doing. So, uh, uh, like for that, you have to read this book on services marketing. So uh, this is one good book for you to understand, start point. We have sent a document also today. So you go and have a look what is services. Services are actually intangible. It is heterogeneous. You know, the characteristics of service makes it more prone to service failures, right? Uh, okay. So yeah. That would be a good start point also for you. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. okay so it is clear. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ba Bala Balavira, Pavan Kumar, Siddhant Gupta, Radha, and Shreya. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I I have a doubt regarding that. Uh, uh, do we uh, think about objectives and collect data? Or, uh, first of all, we require to go uh, business and ask. Ask. First, go to the business. First, uh, reach out to a business. Let us say that you own a business. Uh, what I would do is that I would come to you and I'll say, Pavan, like my name is so and so. And I'm here to speak to you about one of the projects that I'm doing. And is it a good time to speak to you? So I've, I've sent a link also of how to pitch, right? You guys can go and have a look at it. So then firstly, first strike a chord, you know, not ask for data or things in the very first meeting. Try to understand, introduce yourself, say what you're doing. What is your program all about? And how has this program benefited you? So on and so forth. So this is how this is the process which you need to follow. Once you do this, try to understand, then slowly inject this right if you go straight away and say give data nobody will give it so the way in which you approach is very very important okay that's not the object you, you can refer yes. you can refer our previous video where we uh, already explained how you have to pitch to the business yeah. so i have shared the link i have shared the link uh, in that link all the playlist is there so from yeah. there you can see the video okay this is what uh, this is what the pattern when you are going to pitch it right so you can just refer the video you can get an idea Right, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we have uh, Siddhant, Kupta, Radha, Rukmini, Shreya, and then Uday. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. Good, sir. First of all, I would love to thank you, thank organizers for spending so much time with us and resolving our queries. I have two questions, and the first one is a, sort of a hypothetical question. Uh, the question is, suppose we are in a situation where the owner or key person of the business is uh, sort of reluctant or not comfortable that we videotape them, then we are then we have to respect their privacy. But if we do that, then I think Madras might not like like it. So how to no, it is, it is not like that. So, for example, I have uh, shared a doc. I mean, shared one of my links on where I speak about how you should approach and how is that you develop a connect with a business? Let me share one of my own uh, experience. So as a part of my PhD, I had to, uh, uh, um, ha as a part of my PhD, I had to do, do data collection. And uh, it was a time when it was peak pandemic, right? And I, uh, just to do a proper data collection, I wanted 300 data points and uh, 250 data points. And I was working in B2B domain, which is actually difficult, right? Because it is not very easy. And I was a bit confident because since, uh, because I, I move around, I speak to people. I was a bit confident that, okay, prior to pandemic, that I can go to companies, speak to them and get it done. But when the pandemic came in, you know, uh, we were clueless. Absolutely, we did not know what is to be done. And I started sending messages on LinkedIn. Okay, so LinkedIn is a very, very good tool. And I sent 1,287 messages I crafted. I mean, every time I, uh, rest, I mean, wrote, uh, um, you know, um, you know, I, I addressed to that person and I said that so and so, hello, sir or madam, so and so, my name is so and so, and I'm a PhD student and I'm currently working on my thesis, which is good. And uh, it's a part of this particular process. And this is how it is. And you being having worked in this particular domain for so long, you know, your, your response will add value to my, your uh, response to the survey will add value to my study and so on and so forth. Now out of 1,287, 310 responded. Out of the 310 who had responded after cleaning data, I managed to get 282 something, which was usable. 
what i essentially mean to say is that you know it it does take time to convince but then once you uh, come in with the proper story you tell them the purpose why you are doing it i don't think anybody would say a no to you in that case okay so it depends on how you speak and convince so that is this what do you say your convincing or your persuasion skills so that is where it comes to picture how you speak so on and so forth and my que- second question was suppose the owner or that key person of business don't understand english can we take no, the video okay, in I, I, we mentioned that we mentioned in the document that it can be in any language so if you look at the rubrics or when i explained i said that it can be in any language it can be in your mother tongue it could be in hindi it could be in tamil it could be in telugu it could be any language is that okay so that doesn't matter so all right, all right thank you sir no problem okay the next question shreya do we have shreya here uh, sorry radha rukmini and then shreya good evening sir uh, thank you so much for explaining everything patiently actually i have uh, two three questions this weekly classes we uh, you said that dr uh, aditya will be taking live sessions on sundays apart yes. from that do we have any mid mid week sessions yeah Is so mid week sessions, sessions uh, what we'll be doing is that i will uh, be taking sessions on the sales pitching like i'll be bringing in the insights from sales and i'll show you that how it is used in bdm capstone project in addition to that we will have uh, students from the previous terms who have been awarded best capstone projects you know there were many of the students who initially did not like the projects and then later at the end you know they became uh, you know um, the biggest advocates of this right so we had a student also in fact i had sent a document yesterday a, a post yesterday of prashant right so yes, wherein sir, I uh, went yeah, so it is it is a, it is a kind of inspiration to all of us wherein we told him given his conditions challenges we told him that we would give you secondary data and you go ahead with it but he he told me and aditya that no sir we are we, we i i plan to do this on my own because i want to experience it so you see um uh, you know there are students when we are we are all fine we see one set where they don't want to do some one certificate some want to do you know that is how it is so we will have more sessions so typically in every term we uh, we i think i and aditya we combined we have around 20 sessions so which is more than anything that has been given so yeah we do that see even if you look at today's session it is almost uh, close to 3 hours now but we still yeah. have some more questions so we we are okay with it so other than the other than your session other than we that, have ta sessions yeah. also uh, no no uh, we uh, sessions sessions would be taken by us only uh, because okay. uh, we would be in a position to address your queries and on the top of it if you want something on services marketing where if you want to understand what services are or if you want data analysis i know that you would have learned from the best but in case some of them were struggling to understand what standard deviation is or what mean is or why is standard deviation square root of that so on and so and how do you do metadata then also i, I think we, i can come back and you know kind of speak in one two hours what is that and why we do we do it because every subject is thought in a different manner right so yeah so that's how it is so any doubts we can always reach you in you can uh, reach out to email. us uh, kv8 so uh, one um, uh, that you make sure that you have gone through the documents if it is covered mm-hmm. in the documents it is uh, practically infeasible for us to uh, explain all that because we address 50 to 60 emails a day but uh, if yes anything is not covered in that please feel free to write to us and uh, aditya and i would always respond Okay. Mark to both of us. Second question, uh, second yes. question, sir. Uh, one of my friends uh, is running. Uh, he is a dealer of Featherlight uh, office furniture. He's got his business in Coimbatore. Uh, so he is maintaining the data in uh, in just an Excel sheet, and he is mm-hmm. ready to give me the data. But I just wanted to. I just asked him what are you, any business problem you have. Uh, but he says he wants to expand his business. He doesn't have. uh any sales team as such basically the inquiries come to him and he mm. uh, places the order uh, to the featherlight factory then mm. the uh, then he gets the uh, then he after some uh, lead time of 10 days he gets the product and delivers it to the customers so he may, actually he deals only with corporate uh, clients so yeah, that was, but he said in future he has plans to set up a sales team and also mm. he wants to set up a go down wherein he can store uh, he can yeah. retain inventory so in fact there are so many problems which i can foresee now itself so one is that you can ask him like what problems he is facing currently okay but when you, i you ask start him, he says this is this is the these are the two things he no, wants that's, to that's, do it in no, future that's fine no that that is in the future uh, this thing right so you can ask him just have a casual chat you don't have to specifically pinpoint and ask us just have a casual chat and when as he chats and chats and chats he will give you some thing and that could be the start point okay see as i said 
it could not come out in one yeah. trans, uh, conversation uh, sometimes mm. you know it could be 2 3 4 as well so you have to have a conversation see now uh, i was having certain uh, things in mind when aditya came in and brought in some brilliant examples right uh, about the objectives and all that so it, so what happens is that it is new learning for me also so when he said i also made a note of it so that next time whenever i speak you know i can make use of those examples yeah. that's how it is it's co creation right so yeah. you have to speak so basically basically i want to comment on this uh, so nobody if if i will ask you like uh, uh, so about the business right about the business if you ask him there should be not uh, any response they feel it is fine that's why we are asking you to just read the things about the business because they don't know uh, we have a lot of startups in iit madras right they are getting failed why because they don't know what we, they are developing the business but, but they don't know the bottleneck if you ask them they say no we are not having any problem our business is going on that's why you have to do a pre study on the business you have to create curiosity right if i will tell you a story with the data with the stats then you will just go and see in uh, when you have a free time you can just review it okay the data the person is telling is correct or not right so a little bit curiosity is there right then he will understand like if you say i'll give you example uh, one one of the organization they are doing a packing right packing of the boxes and they are sending it to us so in that case what exactly they are doing in a box so they have a big big box in that uh, the, uh, they are thinking the capacity of the box is putting only the 10 pieces right but uh, when they have packed it properly uh, they find it out okay instead of 10 we can put 15 pieces right so five mm-hmm. pieces extra they put it but they don't aware of these things so they the prob- so for three years they are using the same pattern they are sending 10 pieces in a box five pieces they are not using but because they don't know this is the business problem and when they started uh, to fo- follow this uh, particular operation channel in this whatever they are putting 15 uh, pieces and they find out like they are getting a lot of profit from that right so yeah. some of the things they don't aware of so you have to open their eyes okay these are the points where your business is struggling right you have to tell them okay these some sometimes it is coming from the business itself sometimes it is not coming from the business then you have to create awareness then you have to tell them okay this is what the data is saying in this particular business these are the pin points where the business is struggling so are you feeling the same so if he is a big organization or a small organization he will think about it right he will think okay this is this is a point uh, uh, you are telling correct right then he will just explore the possibilities he will see his records okay how much Uh, variations are there in the sale because of this problem right mm-hmm. so you have to create a curiosity with the business right with the business owner then they are mm-hmm. able to identify okay this is fine this is a problem which we are facing on okay it's not something like you, you can go and ask them it's something you have to find it out and you have to just see so i'll give you a, uh, i will give you a example uh, a good example you are drinking a water right you are drinking a tap water so mm-hmm. after some time uh, what is happening uh, a person is coming from uh, some aro company right what he mm-hmm. what he will do he'll just come with come to your house he'll just drink a water first mm-hmm. he not tell anything to you right what is the problem is you are facing he'll uh-huh. he'll just drink a water and he'll tell okay the water is uh, the water taste is something different right okay he'll not yeah. tell from where he is coming he'll tell okay the water uh, taste is I think somebody is unmute, uh, unmuted except uh, you, so you can mute yourself. So he will tell you, okay, uh, some uh, smell is coming from the water. You are not able to recognize that smell because you are drinking the same water for a longer time. Once he comes, then he he is creating a doubt in your mind, right? So then he will tell, sir, uh, might be there is a uh, quality issue with the water, right? so then then he is creating a curiosity in your mind okay uh, then you find it out okay there might be some issue with the water then you can say uh, i am not finding it out then he will take a instrument which uh, test the tds of the water then he will test the tds and he will say okay the tds is very high it is 450 the a normal tds should be between 195 to 200 or 220 but your water tds is nearly 450 right then uh, the problem is coming in your mind okay i am drinking a wrong water it will create a lot of uh, uh, health issues and all then you will ask him what exactly are the solutions so then he will pitch it up that we are from this we are uh, working in this, this company and this is the solution we are providing it right so you see how he is creating a curiosity 
uh, to sell his product, right? You are not aware of what exactly the water uh, thing is there, right? So similar way, you have to create a curiosity with the business or with the business owner. You have to say, okay, these are the problems uh, which this type of business are facing on. Now you are creating a curiosity and in two to third, they, he will ask you, okay, what exactly will be the solution for this, right? So maybe you all will get the point what I mean to say uh, from this particular example, and let us clarify like how you have to pitch and what are the precautions you have to take it. Got my point? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir, and uh, in your uh, document, you have mentioned that there should not be any pare uh, Pareto charts. Uh, we should not uh, put yeah, any Pareto. Yeah. The, reason, the reason is this, that everybody knows that 80% of the problem is 20 because of 20% of the issues. Okay, so that is that that is what your 80-20 rule says, right? So if you, I mean, this is something everybody knows, right? So what is new that what is something new that you're doing? So if if you ask any business, what are your, what are the what are the issues that you face? That is something they might be knowing. So why is that you want to do that? You can, I mean, that's why it, that's why it is not needed. It's very dated. Rather do something new and unique. We have shared tips to visually plot data. And uh, take cues from that and work on it. Okay. Okay, sir. okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, no, no problem. I request you all to please fill in the feedback. We just got some 15 feedback. So I, I request those who have not filled, please fill it. Uh, this will also help us learn. And if there are any shortcomings, we can correct them. Okay. Shreya, Uday, Prakash. Yeah, uh, so a question that I forgot to ask earlier was that you mentioned that there are two portals, one for the primary data and one for secondary data. And uh, when you submit the proposal, you don't uh, add data to it, right? So my proposal got accepted in the last term and I have to submit the midterm uh, yeah. this thing in this term. Mm -hmm. So uh, you also said that for secondary data, there's no midterm submission this time. So no, no, you're mixing, I... you're, you're, you're mixing two things. If you are now planning to do take the secondary data route, you have to start from proposal. You cannot go with whatever you submitted. This is only applicable for primary data. You get the point. But sir, now, I didn't. No, no, that's right. You have to submit from the beginning. The reason is that you had submitted in the primary data this thing route. So what you will have to do is you, when the portal opens, the new portal is underway. It will be active somewhere in February. I mean, this we will do a test run of this in this month. So when we start it in February, you will have to re-upload it and we will re-evaluate it because we have to remove your things. You'll have to send us an email. We have to get your proposal deleted there. And then we have to, you have to put your fresh proposal in this particular system. Transfer doesn't happen like that. So your current proposal is kind of earmarked to primary data. So now what we have to do is if you want to take a secondary data route, your proposal should be deleted in this particular portal. And then only it will be allowed to put in the new portal. You get what I'm so saying? Can I yeah, so can I start start from the February term itself? Yeah, February you can month. start from the February term. You can just write an email to us saying that you don't want to do this and you want to take the secondary data route. However, please note that uh, the grades that you get is D or E only. So yeah, okay. so that is another thing. And so if I want to change the company uh, and like switch to primary data itself, can it be done in the February month? Yes, itself? you can do it. You have to write an email with justification. Why is that you want to change? You have to give justifications. Okay. okay, so you have to give justifications. Why is that you want to change if they're not giving or what are the reasons? And if you find that to be convincing and then we'll permit you to do that. Okay, thank you so much, sir. No problem. Uh, Uday Kiran, Prakash, Sunny Kumar Gupta, Dhruv Kukreja. So we see that we should do only the business which have only problems. Like can we do uh, like uh, nearby my, near my college there are many food stalls, sir. In okay, so they, food stall, in fact, in fact uh, yeah, in fact, they will have much more issues, right? Because uh, there are many food stalls, so there may be competition, which could be one big problem, because of which their margin is getting down. So that that itself is a problem statement for you straight away. Yes, sir. So like uh, in a particular food stall, I can find many people, sir. At any time, they will, there are many people in that food stall. So can okay. I do such that? Uh, uh, how, you uh, want to maximize yeah. the revenue or something. Yeah, so you can say that maximizing the revenue and you can do it provided they are also saying the same storyline for you, right? So see, everybody, every business wants to maximize their revenues. No, So you have to speak to them and first identify what is happening. If they say that, yes, we want to maximize yeah. the revenue, then you know what it is next. So first, yes, what, what basically you all will do, you just go to the business, try to find out the problem statement. After then you see that your data, whatever you are getting is in line with the problem statement or not, right? Because you need the data as well, right? 
finding a problem statement is not a solution. You have to get a data as per the problem statement. If you are finding a problem statement, if you are not getting a data related to it, it doesn't matter, right? So the problem statement is not valid because you are not able to do the analysis. So you have to go, you have to visit, you have to find the uh, issues, what the business is facing on. Just go have an interaction with them. Just try to do a pre-study of the business and then you can just uh, find it out what type of data you have. After finding the data, as I have given the example of COPS, what they are doing, they are just putting a chart, they are putting a clues and they are just trying to map the clues. Then you can find it out, okay, these are the problem statement and these are the data available for you. Accordingly, you can just formulate the problem statement and you can submit, you can start your project. Got my point? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, the next, uh, the next one. Yeah. Uh, uh, good evening, sir. Yeah. Uh, good evening, both yeah. of you, sir. Thanks for your time and the energy, sir. So my 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 question is: so I had a few interaction with the business owner, and uh, based on the discussion, we have identified a problem statement, but I am not sure or uh, uh, whether that is a feasible uh, problem statement. Like uh, they are doing a envelope manufacturing uh, company. Like uh, what we see, uh, uh, SDFC business, I mean, the credit card, uh, uh, maybe Prakash, uh, Prakash, what I what I say, like what I will suggest, uh, we'll take uh, these issues separately because this is something our orientation session where we okay. are explaining about the project. So, in case if you people have a, a problem on uh, the project point of view, basically, what should be the pattern? What are the things uh, should be there in the project? Uh, because this is something our orientation session where we are explaining what exactly the project is all about. And if you okay. have uh, the problem statement on some specific related to the business, if you are already done a uh, like a visit or you are collecting a data, then we can discuss this thing on the Sunday session. Okay, sir. Basically, I want to know whether this is a feasible solution which I could proceed with the uh, with the. With yeah. this so, uh, yeah. what Aditya does is he takes a session every Sunday, and you can take and discuss. But uh, always, when you speak, we would ask you to mask the names because you know it gets recorded and so on and so forth. So for that reason, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, a, it's a basically a live, a live in YouTube, so, in also, YouTube so we don't yeah. want to disclose the. Uh, yeah. no, that's not an issue from my side. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, as long as it's okay, okay for you. Yeah, I mean, from our end, we have to be yeah. clear on this. Thing. Yeah, okay. thanks, thanks. Thank you, sir. Sunny, Dhruv Kukreja, uh, Yaram Reddy, Vidya Sagar, Suraj Kuman, Anir Ban. Yeah, yeah, we still have uh, quite a few. Eight. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, Dhruv. Uh, sir, it, uh, uh, I wanted to. It's Sunny, Sunny, sorry. Sunny, uh, then Dhruv. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. So I work in cyber security firm and we deal with some sensitive data of customers. And okay. uh, as per agreed SLA, we will not be able to share uh, data outside of organization. But mm -hmm. uh, in uh, daily basis, in, uh, we face multiple issues. We have multiple operational issues uh, which we face on daily basis. So for this project, can we mask the sensitive information? Yeah, and you know, customer names and all that can be masked. Yes, yes, that can be masked. That we don't have a problem. You can okay. mask all those, but however, whatever we have asked for, that should be available. Like, for example, if you ask for a letterhead, <coughs> that should be there. Uh, sir, instead of letterhead, can we use uh, email? Uh, like, can we get, uh, like, if we'll get confirmation from my manager on email itself, will it be accept acceptable? No, that's what, as I said, uh, it, it, it will be difficult in that case because I can ask Aditya to send an email for me, right? So that could be done always. So, what happens is that I know Aditya very well and I. Uh, so we know each other from seven, eight years. So I'll say, Aditya, why don't you send an email in this case? So that is why uh, we will we'll have, we need to have a look at it because see, when you're not giving one part, so which is uh, you're masking the data. So mm -hmm. there one is gone. So the other triangulations, the other sides of the triangle, if it is to be joined, then something should, then two parts at least should be connected. No, if that part is also gone, then nothing is left for me. Um, maybe like uh, once I will share that email chain with the IIT team, maybe I can, uh, attach the snippet of my manager profile in my organization. Like he's hmm. actually his manager and he is the person who is uh, responsible to give approval to share this kind of data, something like that. Hmm. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Because in my organization, I'm not sure whether in my organization. Uh, no, they that's use right. you, what you do is once you once you are done, you send an email. We'll see. We'll, I need to have a look. And then based on that, I will say what I think of it. Okay. okay. So once you finish, you send it to me. If I find discrepancy, I'll tell you, okay, this is missing and we might need this. Okay. See, at the end of the day, if some credibility is established, even if 50, 60 